ongoing battle. October 14th, 2015. What is that? Nine years ago? I was at work. I was working for an automotive and truck repair shop in town. And I got a phone call. And it was the guy across the street. And he said, hey, your land is on fire. I didn't even say goodbye. I just jumped in my truck and I probably was going at over a hundred miles an hour down my road, which is not advisable, but I know this road, but still a lot of wildlife, a lot of dogs in the road, but all I had to hear was my land was on fire and you, you got all kinds of things going through your mind when you hear that. And that's about all he told me. And I was off. Well, I get here. And sure enough, there is fire all the way, well, around the west side of my house, behind my house. And it was starting to creep up on the east side. And the first thing I did is I ran in, I was living in the fifth wheel at the time. Uh, the house, the cabin was here, but it wasn't ready for me to move into. I was living in the fifth wheel. Well, I have dogs in a yard. Five dogs were in a yard. And the fifth wheel was inside of the yard. But inside of that fifth wheel were, well, let's just say, a lot of things that if they got, uh, you know, they could explode. And so I have like seven, eight boxes that I'm running in there. First, you know, I make sure everything's okay. My dogs are all right. There was a fire all throughout my front yard and in the dog's yard. The firemen were here. They got here quick. They got that out. But it, the threat was far from over. And so I'm getting this stuff out of the fifth wheel that I don't want to become projectiles. Take it down the hill. My dogs are just laying there. You know, the whole yard's full of people. Firemen, fire trucks going around. And, uh, well, you know, apparently some embers had caught the trees on fire up at the top of the trees. They got under my porch in front. Started that on fire. They were able to get that out without any damage to the cabin. I had just put on the roof probably six months before that, the metal roof. They said if you hadn't had that roof, it would have probably caught fire. And it was 95 degrees in October with a drought just like we're having now. But if there was one lesson that I learned, and anybody that moves rural needs to learn, is do not have brush growing around you. You got to have an area that's clear of debris and brush. And I did not, you know, I hadn't had not owned the place that long, hadn't got to that yet. But it was so overgrown all the way around the property. And it started next door. I, you know, I think it, it was either the neighbor, uh, he was over there doing something or a cigarette got tossed out. Anyway, however it started, the land was very dry. Grass would crunch at your feet that dry. And just we're having the same same year, same kind of year this year. So I made that a priority over the next couple of years is to cut all that stuff back, and, and I've kept it that way. You also need to make sure if you live in a national forest like I do, that you've got access to go all the way around your house that a fire truck can drive and lay water out. And 
And that's very important. You don't want to block that. Fortunately, back then I had that. I still have that. Although there's, there's more structures, I still left that path going all the way around my house. Well, that fire, I missed the next three days' work because that fire just kept reigniting. Fire department were here multiple times. And not just here. There were fires everywhere that year. Everywhere. I don't know how many houses burnt down. At least four or five. Uh, property would just ignite. Because it was so dry. That is something you have to consider every time you, you know, when you move into a national forest area, or somewhere that has a lot of trees, a lot of overgrowth, a lot of brush, you need to consider that. And you got to, you know, now if something like that happened, yes, there's a chance things would still catch on fire, but it's a lot further away from the house. The difference that day was the winds were, we probably had 20 mile an hour winds, which made it impossible to fight. Uh, the land and stuff that it burned up, all that did was do me a favor because it cleared the land, made it easier for me to keep it that way. But on the east side of the property, it didn't, didn't quite burn in there. It started going that way and they caught it. And I spent that entire winter by hand with a with a, a hand saw uh i didn't have a chainsaw then and what else did i use a a sawzall battery powered sawzall just cutting timber down and i had huge brush piles that needed to be burned got those you know and cleared all that out you could not even see the well house any of that beforehand and anytime there's a fire in a forest or something it always grows back better the next year and it did and it's always been a project to keep that stuff down but that's just part of living around what i live around but you learn a lot of lessons uh i didn't have a lick of insurance on anything back then of course i didn't really have much here uh now thankfully i i do so if anything like that happened i'm covered but it still sucks to have to go through, you know, something like that. Uh, and we got friends here that, that have been through that, lost everything they owned in a house fire. And, you know, they still have not recovered from that. They were not insured. And fire or something that could happen at any time, any place, you just never know. What's going to happen? Lightning strike. You never know what's going to. It could start miles away and be at your doorstep in no time. So that's part of a lot of the reason I keep around my uh, land clear like that. Because I don't ever want that to happen again. Uh, that was a day I'll never forget. Thank God none of my dogs got hurt. Uh, if they had not been in a fence, fenced in yard where there was no trees or any brush around there, you know, it might have been a different story. But I, I always try to keep their grass cut low. I weed eat around the fence. Uh, you know, you got to think of these things. But that was one scary day. I won't forget anytime soon. Got a lot of pictures of it. Uh, if I can think of it, I will include that right here. Well, those are just some I seen on, that I had on Facebook, but uh, there was a lot more. There's a lot of video to it. But that was nine years ago today. And it went on four days. Four, four days before it was finally extinguished. And some of them logs and trees that caught on fire burned for weeks. And I almost got killed. I was out there putting out spot fires. It's actually a tree I have out there now that just died last year, an oak tree, but it was a twin. And I'm underneath there putting out spot fires, and this thing's on fire, and it decides it's going to break in half. And I heard it crack. And there wasn't much time to get out of the way. 
and I barely, barely escaped that. It would have landed right on top of me. So I don't ever want nothing like that to happen again. Uh, that's the day in history at the dog man's place. Thanks for watching. For Dogtober, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff helps out the dog rescue. Be sure to check out the video I posted today. And you can check out these puppies that they found on the side of the road. And it's pretty sad. But now they're going to be okay. So, thanks for watching. Happy trails.